Hello, it's Jonathan from Kickstart Commerce, and today I thought I'd record a tutorial as I experiment with adding infinite scroll to a big commerce theme. Now, this um, blog article by Karen White um, talks about how to do it on Cornerstone, and I tried this out yesterday and it worked really well. So I thought, well, let's see if we can get this to work on another theme. Now, one that I'm interested in for this particular functionality is called Roots, which is here in our Sandbox site. So this is our test site. So let me just apply this theme. OK, and then let's have a look at what it looks like. Okay, so this is the theme. We've obviously got a lot of test categories here, so it's full of um, sort of uh, test data. But anyway, this is basically that theme. And if we go to, let's say we go to door handles, then I think we'll have a page, yeah, which has multiple pages. So the whole idea of infinite scroll is that actually when you get to the bottom of the category, you don't have to click on next. You carry on down and it will load the next 12 products and then the next 12. So basically it cuts out the clicking for the customer whilst keeping the page speed um, good for Google because it's only having to load the first 12 when you first get to the page. So that's the thinking behind it. Now, if we just go through um, Karen's advice here, she says, first of all, um, I mean, th this is covering quite a lot of different topics because you need to know how to download the theme. You need to know how to install the Stencil CLI, which is the tool that developers can use to modify the theme um, offline. You also then need to install things into it whilst it's in the sort of developer mode. And then you need to modify the theme files, test it, bundle the theme back uh, together again, and then upload it to your site. So there's quite a lot of different steps here, and it could be a bit uh, daunting to someone who's not done any of those things before. But I thought it would be worth just going through the process. You can see all of these different elements being worked on here. And obviously, this is on my development uh, computer, which will be different to other people's. I use a Chromebook. Uh, some people will use Macs or PCs or Linux machines or whatever. But I'm using Chrome, which has Linux on it. And so I, I basically do it that way. So let's just go through the process. And it might actually help someone to just get a clue as to how to maybe do this on their own site. So let's go to the sandbox. Let's download the theme, first of all. You get the warning about if you're going to uh, modify theme, it may affect your support, etc. But that's fine. So we, we accept that. Now this uh, it says t this may take a few minutes. It doesn't usually take that long, but it does sometimes take a while. So you think it's not doing anything. And this strange loading waiting thing here is flashing in and out. But it is actually doing something. So sometimes you just have to wait up to a minute. OK, so it has um, come up with a file. So I'm going to download this into my Linux area. And let's call this um, roots infinite. OK, so basically it's created a zip file. This is a fairly horrible name with lots of curly brackets in it. Let's just call it roots infinite. OK, so that's step one. Um, let's have a look. So it's basically saying download your theme and install the Stencil CLI. Now, the first time I ran this, it took quite a while to work out how to actually do that. And I think each machine is different and you have to go through different steps. But what, what is actually useful is that BigCommerce has a page called Stencil CLI, installing Stencil CLI. And on here, it will talk you through if you're on a Mac, if you're on Windows, but I'm going to follow the instructions on Linux. And what you can actually do, so I'll just load up Linux on my machine here. So I've got this terminal. And if I look in there, I can see this roots infinite 
folder that I downloaded the theme to. So that's what you need to do is go into there. I can see the theme is there. What I might actually do before I do anything else is go and unzip that file because we want to actually see the theme files at a certain point. And when we're installing the stencil CLI, it needs to see the files. So let me go and do that. So I, the easiest way in my machine is to just go into here and copy those files. Then we go back to here and paste them. That basically unzips it. You will have more elegant ways of doing it, no doubt. Right, so that is done. So we can get rid of this zip file now. So if we now look in here, LS is list, and we can see the, the folders like assets and the files like readme, etc. Right, okay, so now we can actually follow. So let's just put this to one side and let's look at this on the other side. We can just follow these instructions here and apply this to this folder and it should set up the stencil command line interface. I think that's what it stands for. Right, so we can basically copy that command here. And on this machine, I have to do Control Shift V to paste it in there. So we'll run that. Okay, then we just follow each of these steps. We do NVM install 12. It says it's already installed. That's because I've installed it before. You might find that that takes a lot longer than for you. Then we tell it to actually use that version. Okay. And then we install the stencil CLI via NPM. So we do this. Now this can take a while and you do get some fairly sort of uh, worrying messages in here saying there's a warning here that this particular bit is deprecated, meaning it's out of date or not used anymore. But I found that if we just follow these instructions, accept these warnings, as long as it gets to the end of the process without actually erroring or bombing out, then it's usually good and works. So if that's if that helps you to know that, you can worry slightly less about how many warnings there are in here. I guess at some point, Big Commerce may well update some of this stuff, and then the instructions may be slightly different. So just keep an eye on the Big Commerce documentation. Right, so that's finished, and there were no actual errors, just warnings. So then what you do is you run stencil init, which is initialization. So it first of all, it wants the URL of your home page. So we're on this sandbox. So our URL is this. So I can just copy that. You basically, you could put your own website name in there if you're running on a domain, or you could put the big commerce domain in like that. Okay, then it needs an authorization token. Now you can get one of those as long as you're you have enough um, access rights within the back office. You can get one of those in the advanced settings API accounts. And what I would recommend is you say create an API account, create a stencil CLI token. Let's call this um, roots test. And I usually just say local development only. You can actually give it permissions to publish a theme directly from here, but I it's better to, in my experience, um, to, um, to work on it locally, test it locally, and then upload the theme once you've bundled it at the end. So I'm going to say local development only. And then it's given me a file which has got these in, this information in. I'll just save it down, I'll just save it somewhere. And then the actual token is here. So I can copy that and actually now paste that in and it should be happy with that. Then it says, what port would you like to run the server on? I just press enter here to accept the default of 3000. Okay, now, this is something that took me a while to work out when I first did this. I was following the command on here that says stencil start. It says you can start going now by just typing in stencil start. So you do that, now it actually fails if you try and do that at this point. There is actually one more step within the instructions here, 
And you might think you've already run it um, in the earlier bit, N NVM install, but actually it's NPM install this time. And you do actually have to do that, and it can take a while. So let's just let's try it again. NPM install. Hmm, I don't know quite what I did wrong there. Oh, well, maybe I did stencil start. <laughs> so, okay, so NPM install. So it's now actually doing what I was expecting. So it's now installing lots of other things. It's got lots of these warnings again. But again, don't worry about it as long as it doesn't actually error. Okay, so this is just finished and it's come up with all sorts of warnings, um, vulnerabilities, whatever. But it's not actually crashed and so it, it has got to the end. So I believe now that if I do stencil start here, we should find the BigCommerce logo comes up. And then what I tend to do is look at this external address here, copy that, and then go and see if I can run it in the browser. And if it runs, then it's working. This is saying that it's watching files. This is loading. It will often load a little bit slower, but the quite amazing thing about this is it goes and gets the live data from your website to pull through the categories, the product information, etc. So this is a local copy where we can now work on the theme files. We're looking at um, real product data and category data. Um, and so this is actually quite a good thing. So that all looks good. And if we go to door handles, we should see what we saw before, but we are, we are lo locally running rather than on the actual website. Now, sometimes if it crashes, you might find this crashes sometimes, you can just do stencil start again and it will bring it back up. So I've found that quite often it will crash on the first time you load a page and then it's okay after that. So, right, so we've got our pages here. So let's go back to Karen's um, article. So she's saying install stencil CLI, which we've done. And then it says install the infinite scroll plugin. Now, I'm not a massive developer. I don't really, I'm not a programmer by trade. I know, I know some programming, I've done some coding, but I'm not really a developer. So, you know, this is all a bit scary if you're not a developer, but this does seem to work when I tested it on Cornerstone. So let's see how far we get with this theme. So it's basically saying run this command from your stencil CLI command line. So basically what, or your Linux command line in my case, let's just break out of that. So we're, we're still in that folder. So I'm going to actually just put that command there, npm install save infinite scroll. So that should install the infinite scroll package. And I think if you actually open this in a new tab, it takes you this, it's a basically a bit of code that is available, is sort of open source. And this is what's being used um, in this particular example. So it's installing it here. You can actually see this sort of progress bar so hopefully that will install shortly. And then the next stage, it says, go into your assets JS theme file uh, folder, and then the category.js file and put this command at the top. So let's do that. Now I've got an editor called Sublime Text, which is like a programmer's uh, development area. I don't want to upgrade at the moment. And what you can do on this one is you can open a folder. And so I'm going to open this roots infinite folder. And so you can see here all the, all the folders and all the files. Now in the instructions, right? So it's uh, saying add this into category.js in the assets.js theme folder. So I'll go into assets.js theme. Here's the category.js folder. Now you can see there's also, there's, there's other imports here already. So I guess what we can do here is copy this line here. I'm just gonna stick it in right at the top. I guess we could put it anywhere in there. 
Okay, so that's one step. And then it says add the following within the on ready method at the top of your category.js file. Right, so we look down here, we should find a section that has a function for on ready. Right, here's the on ready section, and it's saying add this in. Now, this is a function, so let's copy that make sure you get absolutely all of the code like I just nearly didn't and let's just put that in at the top of this section here so I, I think I can probably just put it in here and let's just indent this bit just to make it neat so this is a function in the on ready section here as we can see here and then this was what was there already and then this closes the whole end ready section. So that should be okay. And this referring to infinite scroll. The only other thing that might need to change here is whether these um, element identifiers are different in this theme um, than they are in Cornerstone. So we may have to come and modify this. And that's basically what Karen is saying in this article saying that the lm variable is the class for the container that holds the products here we're providing the class for the ul blah 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 so but let's see if this just works first of all then the other thing she suggests is that we then also want to hide the page numbers if it's a category so we could try adding this in as it is into the footer.html file. So let me just save this category.js file now. So that's saved. Let's go and try and find the footer.html now. If I'm not mistaken, that's likely to be in templates, components, common. Right, so we've got a footer one here. Sometimes there's a like a custom version of this, but I don't think we've got a custom version there. So let's just go into footer. Right, and it says just put this into your footer.html file. So I'm guessing we could again just put it at the top. I'm sure if you're uh, uh, an advanced programmer, you'd have some ideas about where you wanted to actually put this. But I'm going to put it here. And let's see if that works. So what that should do is saying, if it's a category page, make this style change, which is basically saying if it's a page number list, pagination list, don't display it. So this worked in Cornerstone. Whether it will work here or not, we will find out shortly. So, okay, so that's when you've actually modified the um, files in here, it should show up immediately in our offline version. So let's refresh this page. Right, yes. So now we, we can't see it because we need to run stencil again. So let's go back to our command line because we broke out of there in order to install the infinite scroll. So we do stencil start again. Wait for this to run. You'll see the big comments logo. This should be the same address as we already have in here. So let's now reload this. See if it loads. Now, it has complained about something here. But whether that's critical or not, I'm not sure. Error during CSS compilation by the primary engine. Import root style sheet. So, yeah, I'm not sure whether that's a bad problem or not. It's only looks like it's sort of interfering with things but maybe not we'll find out later so we may have to address that at some point but can we see here first of all the page numbers have gone so that's a good sign so it means that that style sheet command worked now the the proof of the pudding is in the eating so let's scroll down and see if it loads more products and it does so you can see that every 12, in this case, well, because we have 12 showing, it's then loading another 12. So I think that works quite well. I'm quite happy with that. So the final thing here would be to go back to, let's just 
move this over here. Let's go back to here, come out of here. Let's just see what happens if we try and bundle this theme, because that's ultimately what we'd like to do is bundle it and take it back into the sandbox on this occasion. So let's say, uh, I think it's stencil bundle. This should create the zip file. Or if it fails, it might give us some more information about why it's not happy. Now this is a theme um, that has been customized um, before uh, by someone else. So I don't know what other um, things are in there that aren't quite right. Um, and I'm tempted to not change them at this stage if this will bundle out itself okay, because it does run okay on the live website. Okay, so that's finished and it did seem to succeed. Um, so that's good and it's created a file called Roots customized v1 blah 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 dot zip. So if we do ls store dot zip, we can see that's where it is. I might just um, rename that. I'll do move that to roots infinite dot zip. Right, so let's go back to our sandbox now and we can hopefully upload this directly into the themes area. So basically, I need to check we've got enough room for it. I think we have, there's a limit to the number of themes you can have in here, and it's something along the lines of maybe 20, something like that, but here we have 12, so I think we're okay. Right, so let's upload this theme. It's in my Linux area. It's in Roots Infinite, and it's Roots Infinite here. So let's upload it and let it process it. Whilst that's processing, you can see here I did one on Cornerstone. This was the test I did on Cornerstone, and I called it Imp Scroll. So let's just have a look now. This one, we'll just rename it and call it Roots Imp Scroll, something like that. And then let's try and apply it as the live theme on the sandbox. So we should see it's up here now, roof in scroll, roots in scroll. Right, so now let's look at the front end of the live sandbox site. Let's go to door handles. The pages aren't there, which is good. The site is loaded as you would expect. And if we scroll down, it starts to load. So that all looks pretty good. So I'm gonna leave that with you. Hopefully there's some pointers in there that might help you to see how you might implement that on your own store if that's something of interest. Okay, until next time, bye for now.